Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is ECW. The show of the week is here. And it is post Royal Rumble. It is post the road to WrestleMania kicking off. Everything has gone on between now and then. But one thing has remained the same. And that is the one thing that will always remain the same around here. Seth Rollins is still the ECW champion. Three men tried, three men failed. Good job, lads. You gave it a go. And in the main event, two of the lads who failed are going to go one-on-one -on -one against each other. AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre. Styles was the runner-up in that fatal four-way. And he eliminated McIntyre in that match as well. McIntyre wants a bit of revenge. Styles wants to consolidate his place. But then we get to our main event. Really, that we're starting off with right now. I know, I know. You want to hear it. I want to hear it. We can't wait any longer. Seth Rollins, the ECW champion, is here to celebrate his victory at the Royal Rumble. He, he overcame three other men. Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe. He brushed them aside on his way to creating a legacy on ECW. On a way that when years from now, when you say the phrase ECW, the first person who comes to your mind is Seth Rollins. He retained that title once again at the Royal Rumble. And isn't he ever so right? Legacy unmatched. He told you all that it was going to happen, and it did. There is no one who can touch Seth Rollins, and there is no one who can touch his title belt either. And you can see talking down to the, champ to the challengers putting them down on an even lower pedestal than they were already on. And the list goes on and on of everyone who has failed, especially Diamond Dallas Page. And you see now, what is next for Seth Rollins? I don't know. Do you want to put another failure in front of him? Do you want someone who has failed before to try again? Because we've, we're running out of people at this point. We are genuinely struggling to find people to challenge Seth Rollins. We are genuinely thinking about getting a Rainmaker involved. If you know what I mean. Certain event also happened at the Royal Rumble and a certain man with that phrase may well have won it. Maybe he'll be around here. But as for tonight, Seth Rollins will go backstage. He'll watch on to that main event and he'll see those people who couldn't hope for that title because hope is a thing that doesn't exist when it comes to Seth Rollins. Hopes, dreams do not exist. Seth Rollins is reality. And when the reality strikes, dreams are non-existent. And the quicker everyone around here learns that, the better. Seth Rollins has delivered his statement for the night and he is on his way home now. Or to the backstage, rather. Well, the A Show has already kicked things off. The main event has already come. I'd say you can tune out, but you know you don't want to. You know there's already too much going on here tonight for you to want to back out. We're going to kick things off with Cruiserweight action in the uh, in the ring. Kira Tozawa going to go one-on-one -on -one with Jack Gallagher. Tozawa teamed with the new Cruiserweight champion, Austin Aries, a few weeks ago. And now with Neville. Finally off his throne as Cruiserweight Champion with Austin Aries finally once again the Cruiserweight Champion. It is almost time for some new faces to try. It is almost time for there to be some more fights around you. It's like there is a new morale within the Cruiserweight division. There is a man on top of it who cares for the Cruiserweight division, who cares for talents like Akira Tozawa, who cares for people like Jack Gallagher and their abilities. And he wants to see these matches taking place. He wants to see these guys perform to their extent and why they are in this Cruiserweight division on ECW. Why this Cruiserweight division stands out. And why someone like Austin Aries is proud to be the new leader of it. If you didn't see ECW, you didn't see that submission match, you missed one incredible contest. Neville and Austin Aries fought with all they had. It may have vented the ECW before the Royal Rumble and the result was a new Cruiserweight Champion. Neville's reign of some six months, I believe it was at that point, had come to an end at the hands of Austin Aries. The new Cruiserweight Champion may not be here tonight. As a matter of fact, I think only one champion is here tonight on ECW. But Austin Aries is paying close attention to this one. He, is, uh, he stated to me after the, uh, 
uh, after the show that there is a new cruiserweight division now. It is time for a new era of this division to take place. It shouldn't be about people not caring. It shouldn't be about egos. It should be about wrestling ability. It should be about what they do in the ring. Austin Aries wants this division to succeed. He may be the champion, but he wants to earn. He wants to earn the belief that he deserves to be champion. Dethroning Neville is one thing. Holding on to that belt is another. And Austin Aries is challenge, I guess you could say quest even, towards holding on to that title. Begins here tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match between these two fine cruiserweight athletes. Akira Tozawa there with a big drop kick down onto Jack Gallagher. Tozawa in his own right to form a cruiserweight champion as well. Jack Gallagher made his debut not that long ago, but has kind of, uh, kind of struggled to make his name in the cruiserweight division, but mostly because, of course, due to Neville's reign of tyranny over this division and his destruction for six months of cruiserweights like Tazawa. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other names. Rich Swan to an extent. Those kind of people. Drago. Tony Nice, I guess you could say. Trevor Lee. So many men pushed down because of Neville. But now they can have their revenge as Neville no longer stands atop this division. We're seeing back and forth action here between these two men. Both men have respect for one another. Both men know what they can do in the ring. And both men also bring that hard-hitting kind of style as well into the matchup. But, uh, of course, Jack Gallagher, very gentlemanly in the way that he goes about his maneuvers, but isn't afraid to get brutish, as we see with his signature maneuver, just headbutting his opponent. Tazawa, one of the smallest guys in the cruiserweight division when it comes to terms of weight. I think he only clocks in about 160 pounds or thereabout, but he's still... What he lacks in weight, he makes up for in his heart and his desire. And that is certainly something <clears throat> that he'll look to use. To try and overcome Jack Gallagher tonight. This one's going to hurt for both men. Up on the top rope here with Gallagher. And Tazawa back. Superplex. And both men go down. And that is what it means to be in this division. You've got to try and give it your all. You've got to try and risk everything. Even just for one victory. Because it is one victory that could propel you to the top of this division. You look at some of the talent names who I didn't mention that Neville had run over. You look at the likes of Hideo Itami, Zack Sabre Jr. Gregory Helms. There are a lot of names out there who want their hands on Austin Aries' title. Great roll up there by Galher, but Tozawa kicks out early and decides that it might be in his best intention to get a quick breather. Gallagher being quite respectful here, allowing Tozawa back up to his feet. But now he's going to take care of business. No, he's not counted by Tozawa. Bring himself back in. Perhaps didn't want to take flight. Paid for it, though, as Gallagher there counted him. And a backbreaker will send Tozawa back down there. Clenching onto that back as well and all. Splash there by Gallagher, but it looked like he connected with it in an awkward fashion. Didn't connect with that one in an awkward fashion, though. There's the head, but will it put away Tazawa? No, I think the referee is saying his foot was in the ropes. Keeps Gallagher, uh, uh, sorry, keeps Tazawa alive a little longer, but maybe not that much longer. He's thrown into the turnbuckle. The running drop kick. And that could end it here. Cover by Gallagher. Tazawa kicks out. Good kick out there by Akira Tozawa as well, but now he needs to turn things around. Jack Gallagher's had far more control in this matchup than Tozawa has had. And he's going to have to turn that around sooner rather than later, getting himself out of this chin lock now. Very well done indeed. But now he needs to capitalize on it. And capitalize he will there with a Saito suplex. See how this cruiserweight division operates though. It is not all about high flying. There is a lot of elements of strength and just natural wrestling ability, as we'll see from Tazawa here. Deadlift, German suplex to Gallagher. Didn't go for the cover right there because I think he believed Gallagher would be in the ropes. Now I don't think Gallagher is in the ropes. Cover here will have put him away. No, very early kick out. Gallagher's resiliency showing up there. Oh, but Tazawa may look for victory here. He's got Gallagher in his clutch. Just snap, German suplex. No time to brace yourself for impact on that one. All power 
striking you in one go. Tazawa into the cover. This should finish Gallagher here. It doesn't. Both men kicking out of their respective finishers. Got to give him credit where credit's due there. Kind of goes to show this new this new era of the cruiserweight division is certainly panning out the way they want it to. They are fighting for their spot because in all retrospective, you never know when that spot will come around again. You blow one opportunity, you might not get another chance. And that may be a fear going around the minds of the uh, cruiserweights here, especially those who have had you know, who have had chances and have seen them slip away. The likes of Hideo Itami certainly standing out. Maybe even a Rich Swan as well. Cover there. Kick out at one, though, by Tazawa. And see, they've both taken each other's finishing maneuvers. They're both able to keep fighting. They're both able to show strong resiliency as well. Just furthering my point about how much this title and the title opportunity as well means to all the men involved in these matches. Tazawa now brings him down. Drop kick into the back there. Back of the neck, I believe, of Gallagher. And I see done indeed. Quick strike it all. Leaping. Uh, leaping, I guess, downwards STO, if you want to call it that. I don't know, maybe something along those lines. Tozawa, though, certainly capitalizing. Shining wizard to Gallagher. But Tozawa making a bit of a mistake here. Going to the ropes instead of, instead of looking to finish off this match of showboating. Instead of applying the finishing touch. Tozawa now though. We'll look for the scent on splash. Gallagher claws himself. Up to the ropes and hole. Oh, Tozawa still risked it all. Big elbow drop there by Tazawa, and now he's going to look for the scent on Splash. Gallagher still down here. He isn't moving. Tazawa gets up to the top rope as quick as he can. He gets the scent on Splash. This should finish it. One, two. Gallagher kicks out again. Wow. And what a, what a look at that by Gallagher as well. Immediately counters out of it. Where did he find this resilience from? The gentleman there with the headbutt. Into the cover he goes. Has Tazawa been knocked out by that one? He has been. Jack Gallagher comes back from behind to pick up the win. Well, you gotta, you gotta commend Gallagher there. Took the snap German suplex and the scent on splash, but comes through and the headbutt grants him the victory here. Talked about taking the opportunity and making the most of it. Well, Gallagher certainly did that. He knew that he may not that the another opportunity may not come by for another good few weeks, maybe even months, with the caliber of talent in this division. He made the most of it, and it paid off. Jack Gallagher is your winner in this one. Great way to kick things off on ECW. Certainly a very, very talented matchup as well. I certainly enjoyed that one. Well. well uh, we're going to move on now because coming up next we actually have another cruiserweight in action, albeit against someone who certainly isn't a cruiserweight, shall we say, rather the new ECW television champion for the second time, Alistair Black, but Rich Swan comes out here. Swan wasn't in the Royal Rumble for that long, but he left one hell of a mark on it, picked up I believe two eliminations in a short period of time, and it's not like those eliminations were nobody's as well, Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns. We're eliminated by this man. I know. Uh, it, it, it's that stunning in its own right. He was eliminated, I believe, by Marty Skill shortly thereafter. But still, to eliminate two talents like that, a former WWE champion, might I regard you, in, uh, in Sami Zayn and a brute of a man in Roman Reigns. Those are two huge eliminations for Rich Swan to take away from it, and that is why this opportunity has been given to him here tonight. Certainly starting to stand out in the Four Horsemen, whereas when the Four Horsemen kicked off and Apollo Crews was getting all the fame and talk about him. Rich Swan is now looking to try and get his name in the spotlight alongside his Four Horsemen members. He did it. Uh, in the Battle Royal in ECW a few weeks ago. He showed that he is ready to take it to the next level when he eliminated Chris Jericho, the leader of the four horsemen in that Battle Royal. But now, no horsemen by his side. Swan wanted to try and show what he has learned thus far under Jericho 
and a bit under Roderick Strong as well. He wanted to show that he may not, he, he doesn't believe he'll win this one, but he wants to give it his best crack. And I commend that from him. Because he is going to need to give it his best crack as well. Because here is the ECW Television Champion for a second time at the Royal Rumble, Alistair Black. And Bobby Roode finished their dealings. They settled their business and they have moved on. But only one could walk out with what meant the most to the pair of them. And that is the title that is around Alistair Black's waist. Yes, you can say but what Bobby Roode, that Bobby Roode didn't head into 100% and I completely agree with you. But I had stated before then that it had to end at the Royal Rumble. And I am a man who sticks to my word as ECW General Manager. And I will continue to stick to my word. I'm sorry Bobby Roode, didn't end the way you wanted it to. But this is how it has to end. It's just business. That's it. Alistair Black, anyway, the television champion once more. Gold returns to the Wyatt family. And what a, what a Royal Rumble the Wyatt family had in their own right. Alistair Black, of course, winning that television championship. But also the monster among men, the runner-up in the Royal Rumble. The most eliminations in the Royal Rumble with four. And four big eliminations in their own right. Shinsuke Nakamura, Chris Jericho, The Undertaker. And I believe it was uh, Edge from NXT as well, who he eliminated. Interesting thing about that, he eliminated three former world champions. He eliminated the longest reigning world heavyweight champion in Shinsuke Nakamura. He eliminated a current world tag team champion in The Undertaker. And he eliminated a man who was is, who is given the respect on NXT in Edge. And he eliminated the leader of the Four Horsemen. And a man who he has had many interactions with in the past. In Chris Jericho. That speaks the volumes of how incredible Braun Strowman's Royal Rumble was. He was eliminated, of course, by the winner himself, Kazuchika Okada. <clears throat> Still nothing to tell you about Okada and his Royal Rumble victory. Uh, in regards to what he'll do. Simple fact being that Okada is resting. He is injured. Severely injured. From that takeover match. And that is why on the night uh, when Okada came out, I was so in shock, stunned, that I didn't expect to see him one bit. But he came out and he won. And now we wait to see what he has to say. Now we wait to see where he goes from here. But as for right now, we're going to focus away from the Rumble. And on a man who was and on two men, though, who were at the pay-per-view. One, of course, being in the Rumble. They're still having their match here tonight. Rich Swan and Alistair Black. Swan trying to keep his bay, trying to work around the strengths of Alistair Black, who hits a big Saito suplex there. Black, I believe, got busted open at some stage in the match against Bobby Roode. But that is kind of what brings out even more the inner demons within Alistair Black, what brings out the Wyatt family side to him. Because <clears throat> Alistair Black is a controlled man. You know, he kind of keeps himself to himself. I guess you could say introvert would be the way of saying what Alistair Black is. But when he's busted open, it all changes. Sister Abigail has his way. Bray Wyatt's teachings have their way. And he just loses the plot, essentially. And he lost the plot with Bobby Roode. And Black Mass was what ended their big-time story here. Their big-time feud on ECW. New beginnings for Alistair Black. And certainly Rich Swan is trying... Make sure that he does indeed get a, a shocking start in this new beginning for Alistair Black. Leaping cutter there by Swan. So far, so good for Rich Swan. If I was Chris Jericho watching this, I'd be proud of what my man has accomplished within the Four Horsemen thus far. And again, he goes to the turnbuckle. Black dazed. Reverse Harakarana, and Black goes down. He could be in for a giant upset here. Rich Swan has been... Standing out from the pack as of late. And he's going to continue to try and do that here in this one. Victory or defeat. So long as he gets a great performance in. That's all that matters. But look at that. He has been working over Alistair Black in this one. He's been getting his moves in. And Black just sits down. As almost as if he hasn't felt the effect of Rich Swan in this one. But that super kick may well have been able to do something. Cover here now by Swan. Kick out that early from Alistair Black. 
You can hit him with as many strikes as you like. Alistair Black will come back and Alistair Black will strike you ten times harder than you thought you'd get struck by Alistair Black as well. Certainly when Black Mass rolls into town. It is very hard to bring yourself up after you get knocked down by Black Mass. Up in the air here. Great counter there by Rich Swan. Back open here and oh! Spiked him there with that reverse Rana. Going after the arms, but I don't think that's the wise decision. The legs is where uh, Alistair... Oh, look at that! A black, almost like a black mass of his own there. Spinning roundhouse kick by Rich Swan. Looking to create a huge uptick here on Alistair Black. Not going to happen. Oh, what could have been in that moment, though? A move similar to Alistair Black's as well. Imagine if he had finished the job there. Black, though, right up to his feet and right back in business. DDT and Alistair Black as if to say, is that all you've got? I want more. I want better out of you. Again with that single underhook suplex to Rich Swan. And here comes the Dragon Slayer now. The cutter rolls through into the Dragon Sleeper. Locks his arm in and his arm locked around the back as well. Making it that much harder, that much more torque being applied. And that much more tougher, the grip is tighter. And it makes it harder for Swan to get out of. But Swan still finds a way out here. And tries to create separation between himself and Alistair Black. Forearm shot now. Can Swan get anything going for himself here? He has him in the turnbuckle. Pushes him away. So That is a long way to go. Okay. Oh, look at that splash there by Swan. But he can't get complacent. He needs to act quick. He goes into the cover. Perhaps you're trying to wear down Alistair Black a little bit here. Late two count, though, on the television champion. Another opening. Alistair Black stuffs it. Big leaping cutter there. He caught him with that one. And Rich Swan is looking difficult to try and get himself back in this one. Alistair Black now almost just toying around with him, just walking around Rich Swan as he tries to Hang in there now as he tries to find an opportunity. It's gone! Black Mass! One, two, three. That is over. Alistair Black is your winner in this one. Rich Swanee did fight. Rich Swanee did look to prove Chris Jericho wrong. He did look to prove that he has developed. And I think he has. But it was always going to be an uphill challenge against this man. Alistair Black is your winner as another fallen foe lays behind him. Black, your winner. The winner is the ECW Television Champion. Go from here. Who is next in line for him? Could it be someone from the ECW title matchup? Could it be someone along the lines of maybe a... I don't think of who else performed well in the Royal Rumble, but that has evaded me right now. But there's got to be someone next in line for Alistair Black. And he will keep his wits about him and decide who, where, and when. Because that is how he operates. But here we go. Moving on to our next contest now. And this has become sort of a grudge match in some ways. Sammy Callahan comes towards the ring here. Callahan's has been a, uh, a few weeks that he would like to forget. Qualified for the Royal Rumble in a great fashion. However, just before the Royal Rumble, he was powerbombed on my desk by Braun Strowman. His back was injured. He was told to skip the Royal Rumble. Sammy Callahan said no way. He was going to the Royal Rumble. He was going to compete. He went in the Royal Rumble, but the injury was too much for him, and he was eliminated almost as quickly as he got in the ring. And, said, and Callahan said here tonight, I don't care if I'm hurt. I don't care if I'm injured. I want to settle business with this man. Sammy Callahan on this night here has signed away his death wish because he is going one-on-one -on -one with a monster among men the runner-up in this year's Royal Rumble the man who eliminated four men and eliminated in his own right three former world champions and the leader of the four horsemen Braun Strowman leaves a wreck of people behind him in that Royal Rumble he left Sammy Callahan a wreck before the Royal Rumble and now Braun Strowman looks to finish off what he started with Callahan whether or not Sammy Callahan thinks this is a good idea or not I don't think that goes through the mind of this man all he wants to do is just give it to Strowman 
give everything he's got and try and bring the beast, the monster among men, down. However, Sammy Callahan, you are walking into a death trap. I signed this match because Callahan showed that he was willing to give everything. And I said, whatever happens in this ring, it is your fault. Oh my god. And his fault it shall be. After this match, win or lose, I really want to see Sammy Callahan take some time off. Because he has been destroyed as of late. That back of his has to be ripped to shreds by Braun Strowman. Strowman, one of the biggest talking points on ECW outside of Seth Rollins right now. Everywhere Braun Strowman goes, carnage is left in its wake. And we're seeing it right now with Sammy Callahan. That wasn't even a suplex. You just tossed him. Oh, this is going to hurt you. Walking over the ribs of Sammy Callahan as if they weren't in enough pain already. Braun Strowman's just adding to it and now just toying with Callahan, just wrenching that chin lock in with ease. Doesn't even look like he's trying, it just looks like he's holding his head in his giant hands. Good job there by uh, Callahan, no fights out of it, and that meant pretty much absolutely nothing because he's floored back down with a big time lariat here. Sammy Callahan wanted to show that he had it all within him. Well, he's trying here, and Braun Strowman's giving him a run for his money. Oh my god! Strength there by Callahan to hit that back suplex. I know we've seen men suplex Strowman in the past, but when your back is ripped to shreds, and when you're as far away from 100% as you can be, that is incredible by Callahan. And he's still going here now. A sudden burst of pace from Callahan. The Callahan death machine riding on here. Going after the leg of Strowman now, trapping it in and going after that knee, trying to ground Strowman. Trying to take away the vertical advantage that Strowman has. Callahan. Oh, got him there. Like a guillotine leg drop. And look at how little all of that meant. Strowman's just right back up to his feet. And right back in the driver's seat as well. Clubbing blow. And he goes down. Sidewalk slam now. Yep. With ease. With ease. He could have done that with one arm. Braun Strowman is truly something else in this ring. Callahan trying there, but nothing going his way. Grounded once more by Braun Strowman. Strowman now has... Oh, he's going to go for the power slam? No, he's not. In the corner. Snake eyes! And Callahan just... His expression there, basically. The way in which he just fell back. Speaks the story, but this may end it here. Running power slam, middle of the ring. One, two, Callahan. What are you doing? I know Callahan's someone who doesn't know the meaning of the word quit. I know Sammy Callahan is someone who will fight until he takes his last breath. He is someone who will fight until the last drop of blood comes out, but there are there are much more things to life than trying to overcome Braun Strowman. So many have tried and so many have failed. He's looking for something there but just planted with that DDT. Look at the way Callahan's crawling around the ring. He looks lost. Doesn't look like he knows where he is right now. Great work there by Callahan though. Drop toe hold. And Strowman clinging on. Strowman just did a forward roll and then a drop kick. How? How do you do that at over 400 pounds? Oh, big boot. I think Callahan's busted open. Yes, he is. Yeah, he certainly is. Oh, no, no. Strowman's got it locked in here. No, Strowman with the arm wrench. He's standing. Arm triangle lock you. We've seen so many men pass out. So many men go limp to this maneuver. Will Sammy Callahan join the long list? Yes, he will. Braun Strowman is the man who is the reason for why Johnny Gargano still isn't back after there's been almost like three months at this point. And Sammy Callahan could be in for the same treatment as what Johnny Gargano got. 
Like I said, though, he doesn't know the meaning of the word quit. Under no, me under no way whatsoever would he have passed, would he have tapped out, he would have passed out. And he may well pass out here from the pain. Running power slam again. Please, Callahan, save your career. Save yourself. Oh, my God. There are some things that you, you just you just don't know what to say. This is where Sammy Callahan's heart comes from, his drive, his desire. Every match, he gives it 110%. He wrestles every match like it is his last, but this one could actually be his last. Braun Strowman is just literally throwing him around like a puppet. Strowman drags him to the middle of the ring. There's almost nothing. There's almost no fight left in Callahan. Once again, just propped up in the arms there. Look at the way Strowman just wrenches him around, grips onto that neck. Callahan can't even feel the floor beneath him. He's swinging in the air. He's gone limp. He's out. He's out. Strowman. Strowman's ended another. That is job done for Braun Strowman. And as Strowman kneels over the fallen body now of Sammy Callahan, he is your winner in this one. Jesus Christ. What a scary, scary man this one is. I... Well, Sammy Callahan wanted a fight. He said he would give his heart, his soul. And whatever happened in that ring would be his fault. Was it worth it? I will say that to you now, Sammy Callahan. Was it worth it? Braun Strowman stands here looking as unstoppable as ever. Sammy Callahan could well be on a trip to the emergency room. Braun Strowman is your domination in this one. Braun Strowman is your winner by a long, long margin. But now we move on. We move on to a point that I was, uh, to a point that backs up what I was saying at the end of the Alistair Black match. I was saying maybe Alistair Black should look at someone who had a great Royal Rumble performance. I listed, uh, and I was struggling to list people. But coming up next are two men who had really good Royal Rumble performances in their own right. It is Sheamus and Tetsuya Naito one-on-one. -on -one. Sheamus came in at number two, I believe. Number one or number two. I think it was number one and lasted all the way up until number 10, survived a third of the Royal Rumble entrance before being eliminated by the man he faces here tonight. Sheamus was one of the longest survivors in the Rumble, I think. Don't quote me, but I think Braun Strowman lasted the longest out of everyone. But still, Sheamus had a really strong performance, lasted a long time, and then was eliminated by Naito. And now, these two men will clash here tonight in this ring. It was a great rumble for both men, as I said, and maybe a win here tonight for either man could see them potentially being in the vision of one Alistair Black. You know what Alistair Black is like? He sees danger, he strikes danger. He sees a foe that could fall to him, he strikes said foe, and will strike them again, and again, and again, and again. Well, the, the, eh. the two men in this match can certainly take a strike and give one back as well. Sheamus and Naito expect to see that coming from this matchup. A lot of hard hits. A lot of strikes that you might win at. Certainly. Don't be surprised if blood is drawn in this one. And here he comes now. What a rumble Tatsuya Naito had. Three eliminations to his name. It was a strong, strong showing for Tatsuya Naito. Headed in with a momentum as well. I believe after winning the eight-man battle royal last week. I think I am correct in saying that. Yes, I am. And he went on to have a really good rumble. Fair play to him. Lasting as long as he did and having quite a showing in it. Eliminated Champa, Sheamus, and I think he also picked up the elimination of one... Uh, Shawn Michaels, maybe? I don't know why I just decided to suddenly go high voice, but... Certainly picked up for the elimination. Certainly one of the better performers of the Royal Rumble when it came to eliminations itself and uh, yeah, he, like I said, lasted a long time and is looking to continue that form here tonight against Sheamus. 
Can Sheamus get a measure of revenge for what happened at the Royal Rumble? Can he make Naito pay for eliminating him? Maybe, maybe not. I know Naito was ganged up on, I believe, two people eliminated Tetsuya Naito. I think it was uh, Roman Reigns, maybe, and Rusev. I think you have to work together to get Naito out of there. We prepare for this one now. And, uh, I'm being told that it was not uh, Tetsuya Naito who eliminated Shawn Michaels. I think that was Rusev who eliminated Shawn Michaels. But uh, nevertheless, we are underway in this one. And we've kicked things off here. Sheamus has certainly kicked things off with a hard strike, and we are underway now. These two men are going to leave it all, on, all, uh, all on the line here for victory. We are just past the Royal Rumble. There is a a ways to go to WrestleMania, and there is a ways to go to get your name out there, because, of course, a win here might not only be towards Alistair Black. It could even be against Seth Rollins. Anything is possible on ECW right now. Look at these. Repeatedly into the turnbuckle. Sheamus finally fighting out of it and, sh and sending Naito headfirst into it. Half and half suplex there. Naito crawling around a little bit. Certainly felt the impact of that one. Can't really blame him as well. Sheamus does hit incredibly hard in the turnbuckle now. Naito, though, not going to catch a break. Snake Eyes gets all of it. Working on the, the head of Naito for that bro kick. Jumping knee there by Sheamus. Don't think I've seen that one before by him. Naito, though, able to fight back immediately here. Collision between the two men, but he's grabbing on to Sheamus now. Puts him up against the ropes and pushes him away. See what will happen here now with these two men. Hard lariat there by Sheamus. Sheamus certainly used the Royal Rumble to his advantage to get his name back out there here on ECW. And now he has to continue to try and do that in this matchup here. Drop kick to the back there by Naito. And now he looks to have the control in this matchup for a little bit. Early cover on Sheamo. Now look at that. Pushes the head up there. The Almost careless attitude of Naito, that desire for everything to be tranquilo. Just kind of showing off a little bit there was Naito. Look at the way now, that's the second time I believe he has pushed Sheamus away from the ropes. He's doing this because he can. But then when Sheamus puts in a hard hit and suddenly the, the ways of the match turns around. Tranquilo may well slip away a little bit because here comes Sheamus now. Has him up in a power slam position. Into the turnbuckle yet again with Snake Eyes. And Naito may well have gone cross-eyed after that one from the way he fell down. Covered now by Sheamus. Naito kicking out very early on. And Sheamus now ringing in those hard strikes again. Close fist or not, we don't care you're on ECW. What we care for is action. Great. Step up in Zagiri there by Naito. And a pop-up drop kick as well. Let's see what else Naito has in mind now. Send Sheamus over to the other turnbuckle here. Sheamus could be in trouble maybe. All depends on what Naito has in mind. Look at this. Swings him around there. Roops him in the ropes and a neck breaker. Tetsuya Naito now using some unorthodox offense to his advantage again. Sending him into the turnbuckle. Oh, a hard knee there. Counters what he was looking for. Shoulder tackle will send him back down. No chance there for Naito to crawl away either and try and create a little bit of space. Dumped on his head and his neck by Sheamus. Good God. What a Cobra clutch suplex that one was. Could have finished off Naito maybe from the way he landed. Naito kicks at it too. That doesn't mean to say that Sheamus is done with Naito in this one. And Naito ain't done with Sheamus either. He fights back here in the turnbuckle. Once more he sends him. Up on top we go. Is Naito going to look for the head scissors? Yes he is. Up on top. Top rope. Have a Karana. Down goes Sheamus. Naito has him in the middle of the ring. Can look for Destino here. Will he strike it on Sheamus? Is he done for? Naito. Destino. Dino! Into the cover after it. This one should be over. There's two. Kick out by Sheamus. Right as the hand was coming down for three. 
That was close there for Naito. The crowd is quite stunned in its own right that Sheamus survived. Moved out of the way there with that elbow drop and now, and now Sheamus is going to make Naito pay for not finishing him off. Here come the Irish Curse backbreakers, a trio of them. The third one there into Naito's back. And Sheamus has certainly done a number on Naito's back throughout this matchup as well. So that is going to assist in putting him away. Counter there to the Irish whip. Back off the ropes comes Sheamus. Collision between the two there. Naito maybe just a little bit too dazed to get what he wanted going there. Now up to the ropes. Hung out there with a stun gun. And Naito ankle lock applied here to Sheamus now. Trying to tear away at the leg so he can't hit him with the bro kick. Tactical, very smart there by Naito. Can he finish off Sheamus here? No way. Sheamus, well known. His refusal to tap out. Big elbow there to Naito's head. Creates a little bit of separation. Sheamus makes him pay for it. Back suplex on its way. Oh. Caught him again with it. Let's see what else is in. Store for Naito now that Sheamus looks a little bit in control here. Rolling fireman's carry. Oh no. Oh, Sheamus is going to look to try and end it. Sheamus is going to look for victory. Bro kick to Naito. Revenge for the rumble may be done for Sheamus. No, it won't be. Naito still in this one. A kick out of two. You can see the way that Sheamus looks at Naito, that it's a mixture of, I imagine, a little bit stunned, but frustrated, but also glad, because he can keep the beats going here, and the beats will pound away into the chest of Sheamus. There's six, seven, eight, nine, and the tenth clubbing blow into the chest. T-shirt or not, you are not going to be saved from that impact. And as Naito tries to recover on the outside here, Sheamus will try and take advantage but Naito able to bat them away and go right on the front foot into the announce table now and again Sheamus collides with the announce table here Naito feeling it now but once again even on the outside even after all we've seen in this matchup the tranquilo the calm attitude of Naito but it's Sheamus who sends them back in the ring I said this is going to be hard hitting and they have delivered on that. Going all out with one another. But they still haven't had an opportunity to finish it yet. Now Naito continues to go to work on the leg here of Sheamus. Really doing a good job of trying to take away even the Irish Kiss backbreaker as well. Oh Naito now Koji Clutch. Koji Clutch. He has it locked in here on Sheamus. We've seen people tap out to Naito's Koji Clutch before. Will Sheamus join that list of people? He's trying to find an escape. No way to get to the ropes. He had to get himself out of it. And it certainly did there. A thump could be heard from that elbow. And Sheamus now. The one in control as they get up to their feet. Clubbing. More strikes into the, the head of Naito. Just softening it up into mush. For the bro kick once again. May not even be able to hit the bro kick after the work Naito's done to the leg. Headbutt, looked like he was going for Naito guided him in there and was able to work around it to his advantage. Neck breaker now. Naito gets all of it. Naito with a hard neck breaker. And now Naito looking to do anything it takes to win here. Using the ropes, but oh god, Shane has kicked out right away there. But this one ain't done here. Naito now looking to try and slow down the pace again. Tranquilo setting in with the chin lock. The complete opposite of how Sheamus wants to go in this matchup. Sheamus wants to go at 100 miles an hour. Naito is choosing not to. Drop kick to the knee again. More work on the legs there to take the bro kick away. Kick in the gut now. Naito working to his strengths here. Chin lock. Drop kick. What more does Naito have in store here for Sheamus? What more does Sheamus have in store for Naito? This has been a great back and forth match by these two men. Oh, this one's going to hurt for you, Sheamus. 
Neck breaker by Naito. The moment Naito took away the legs from Sheamus, that was when the matches started to go downhill for the Celtic Warrior. And even his kick out there speaks volumes. Very weak almost. Struggling to get the arm up. Naito could be on his way to a victory over the Celtic Warrior here unless Sheamus could do something drastic and very, very quickly as well. Naito now in the turnbuckle. Oh, satellite DDT! And Naito may look to make it two of them. No, it's going to be that neck breaker again. Really going to work on the neck now. Really doing damage on the head. As he looks for this for the second time. And this time for victory. Naito brings him in. Destino. Sheamus is done for. Two. Three. Naito is your winner in that hard, hard-hitting contest. Tetsuya Naito. What a run it has been for him as of late. Won that Battle Royal the other week. Great performance in the Rumble. And now, your winner here tonight over Sheamus. Take note to the champions. Even you, Seth Rollins. Because there may be a chance that your next number one contender is Tetsuya Naito. What a great win there for Naito. But you can't underplay Sheamus' performance either. He, did a, he was a, a strong job to hang in there for as long as he did. Naito, however, is your winner. And that is all that matters at the end of the day. Good win there for Naito. Still a good performance by Sheamus, but a good, good match overall. Now it is time, though, for our main event. And this is going to be one that matters a lot. This is going to be one that won't be for the faint of heart in its own right. This is going to be one to settle a score. AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre. Two men who came up short in the Battle Royal. Two men. Battle Royal, the fatal four-way. Two men who wanted to do everything in their power to take away the ECW title from Seth Rollins. Like so many more who have come before them. They fell short to Seth Rollins. Styles eliminated Drew McIntyre, made him tap out as well, which I imagine has to have a bit of an embarrassment towards Drew McIntyre. Tapped out to the calf crusher. For Seth Rollins maimed AJ Styles. Almost used him as a uh, as a martyr, I guess. Not, not a martyr, but a... Um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. An example, I guess you could say. AJ Styles was caught with a curb stomp and an architect annihilation would finish the match. But now AJ Styles this year fighting still. And he wants to go one-on-one -on -one against Drew McIntyre. He wants to settle this score once and for all. Let's see if he can do it. Let's see what will happen in this matchup here. Certainly these two men will not have respect for one another. Certainly all bridges when it comes to respect have been burned. Now it is just all about being the winner in this one. AJ Styles waits in the corner for the arrival of the man who claimed that he did not, or he had been overlooked, that he did not want to be overlooked any longer. Heading into the Royal Rumble, that he would talk business with ECW after he captured that ECW championship. Jew, buddy, you still got a long way to go before that's happening. You wanted to talk turkey? Well, you've kind of got no belt to talk turkey with now, so... And you walked out on an ECW match that you were supposed to have against Alistair Black. And you thought that you had enough to defeat Seth Rollins when really you didn't. So... Not really in my good books there. But anyway... We'll, uh... We'll gloss over that. Or will we? Because it is quite funny that Drew McIntyre thought that he was going to be the one to end it. A man who only a few months ago was a forgotten nobody on Monday Night Raw and a tag team that was going nowhere with James Storm. The only reason Drew McIntyre was in the position that he was in heading into the Royal Rumble was because I gave it to him. Because I knew the talent that McIntyre had. But I didn't know an ego would come into play. I thought Drew McIntyre loved business. I thought Drew McIntyre loved ECW. I guess he didn't love it enough to walk out on it. 
And that is what matters most, Drew McIntyre. You have left a reputation for yourself after the Royal Rumble. And I will be the first one to say, it's not a positive. But let's see if McIntyre can get a measure of redemption for the Royal Rumble. Let's see if he can finish off AJ Styles here. We're underway for our main event of the evening. Oh, big Irish whip there by McIntyre right away. I will say this for as much as Drew McIntyre is on the wrong side of me as of late. He certainly does hit hard. Chops lighting up the chest there of AJ Styles. But Styles still able to get out of it. Pushes away there to create a little bit of separation. Up against the ropes now. Here comes the speed of Styles. Slides through the legs. And a Hurricanrana McIntyre flips. Two different styles of uh, wrestler within this one. We got the strength and the... What's the uh, phrase I'm looking for? I don't know. It slipped me right now. A barbarian. There we go. Barbarian-like uh, fighting style from Drew McIntyre. And a very flamboyant, I guess you could say. But also a very quick, very precise move set from AJ Styles. Oh, flying forearm in the corner there, though, by McIntyre. There's the, the style of his comes out to play. But Styles there. It's the big Pele kick. And now Styles is going to use his own strength to his advantage here. Nice power bomb. Flips over as well. Great roll up. Great cover here. McIntyre able to kick out early on though. So far so good for AJ Styles. Gotta imagine though, even though it has been some time, both men are still hurt from that Royal Rumble match. It was hard hitting. It was a spectacle to watch. The phenomenal blitz though by Styles just... Unloaded away on McIntyre now as Drew hangs on against the ropes there. And uh-oh, we're going to the outside, it seems. No escape from it. Back suplex on the apron for McIntyre. And AJ Styles is in control right now. Has him able to find his carry and oh, into the barricade. Styles is coming with a bit of a mean streak here. Perhaps fighting for the values and beliefs of ECW that Drew McIntyre helped to push aside when he walked out that one week. Perhaps revenge for, you know, he may well have defeated him at the, uh, the Royal Rumble. He may well have eliminated from him from the matchup, but Drew McIntyre still won a triple threat with Samoa Joe involved heading into the Rumble. And AJ Styles may want to look to overcome that loss and really put Drew McIntyre beside him and focus on a future for him. Styles now snap suplex there to McIntyre. Certainly a difficult move to hit given the height advantage that Drew, uh, that Drew McIntyre has. Big kick in the back though. AJ Styles now. Gonna look for it again here. And he'll get it again. Drew McIntyre needs to think up something big here if he wants to hang on in this one a little bit longer. Because right now... AJ Styles has his number. Torture rack, power bomb there into the cover, hand under the ropes. Up against the ropes now again. Gonna, go, gonna look for it again. Oh, McIntyre doesn't let it happen this time. Big super kick and Styles went to roll out of the ring there. McIntyre didn't allow it into the cover. I'll give him credit, that's smart. That certainly was smart. A chin lock applied now. Wrenching on the head and the neck. Twisting it a little bit. Making that future shock just a little bit more painful when it, if it is struck. Up on top. Elbow misses. AJ Styles just too quick for Drew McIntyre currently. Uh-oh. This ain't going to be good for him though. Power bomb on its way. Oh no. Buckle bomb. Hey, if you can't beat him, take some of his moves. Am I right? Drew McIntyre now after the buckle bomb. Cover here on Styles. Looking for the victory. Kick out of two there by Styles. McIntyre frustrated with the count. Another person for him to get frustrated at, I guess. Big kick there. Like I said, this barbarian esque move set of Drew McIntyre is certainly playing into its own advantage here. Oh, God, another power bomb on its way. Styles, though, does great to fight out of it. Creates a little bit of separation. Pele kick! 
and Styles has McIntyre in the perfect position. Dead centre, middle of the ring for him to fly. AJ Styles, phenomenal forearm to McIntyre. Halfway across the ring, but he got all of it. Styles strikes as he finished off McIntyre for a second time. One, two, he's done it. AJ Styles has won in rather surprising fashion. I thought that was gonna go on longer than it did, but AJ Styles is your winner in this one. A bit, whoa, 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 no, the, Neville! Where did Neville come from? Styles still hasn't seen him yet. Neville, the former Cruiserweight Champion has come in and he's looking for the element of surprise right now on the phenomenal one. Styles sees him. Neville, we haven't seen him since he lost the Cruiserweight Championship and you can't imagine that man is in a good mood at all, but why AJ Styles? What has brought Neville to start attacking AJ Styles here? The, cruiser, the former Cruiserweight Champion didn't even bother with Tazawa or Gallagher in, the, in the, their matchup earlier on. He's gone for the big guns. AJ Styles has no fight back right now. The element of surprise truly caught him off guard. Neville in the turnbuckle, Tornado DDT, planting Styles on his head. I don't know what to make of this. Neville has seized an opportunity and has made it all about him. Again here for Styles, another Tornado DDT. And Neville now. He's gonna lock it in on Styles. He's gonna lock it in on Styles. The rings of Saturn. The rings of Saturn are being applied here. AJ Styles locked in the rings of Saturn by Neville. He's yell. He just gripped AJ Styles. He just wrenched on that neck that he had just done so much damage to. Neville has left a mark on ECW and leaves it with a simple phrase: "The King will be ignored no more." Neville has left the sea of destruction in his way and his name has been AJ Styles. Neville is the one who we will talk about coming out of ECW here tonight. Not AJ Styles, not Tetsuya Naito, no. Neville, where does the King of the Cruiserweights go from here? Where does ECW go from here? This, this is a turning point.